What is up, everybody? Isaac here, Civil Engineering Academy. Excited to be with you on another podcast episode. I am excited to share this one with you. This is an update to a video I did many years ago. I continually get these questions all the time, and that is which PE exam is the easiest? And we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to go over some statistics that the NCEES produces, and we're going to drill into why this exam may be the easiest or maybe one you want to check out or consider if you're confused about which exam you want to take that's out there. Uh, in truth, they're all different difficult, right? The PE exam is no joke. They're all a challenge in their own way. And with any exam, you're going to have to spend a ton of time trying to practice and study for this stuff. So really, there's no easy way out of this stuff. Uh, you just have to go through it. But today I will give my reasons why I think this particular exam is the easiest one and uh, maybe some statistics to back that up. And we'll dive into some of the specifications about that. But uh, it's actually a pretty close tie. You probably know what it is. Anyway, we're going to talk about it. It's going to come up right after this. Hey, before we start diving into this awesome podcast episode with lots of nuggets of awesome wisdom uh, that we're going to help you with, I want to take a moment to highlight our awesome partner, Civil Engineer Gear. As a civil engineer myself, this is hands down the go-to destination for sleek and professional looking day-to-day -day gear with a civil engineering flair. You can bet that it's mine for sure. So whether you're on the job site, the job office, you're burning the midnight oil studying for your exams, or you're just chilling at home on the weekends, which many of us do there is civil engineering inspired products there that combine functionality and professionalism to be your companion your best companion during those days you want to check out i definitely love the comfortable t-shirts and sweatshirts i'm wearing one right now i don't start my day without a awesome drink one of my favorite drinks and they're awesome canteens we also have awesome mugs and don't even get me started on the spacious bags that they have there they're big enough for all of my personal protective equipment my ppe shove it all in there carry it with me and it's not so big that you can't carry it around it's just it's actually a perfect fit you can use it for your gym clothes you can wear it, use it for your camping gear yoga whatever it is you name it throw it in the back now the best part of all this is that shipping is free on all orders so if you are interested in getting some sweet civil engineering gear check it out at civilengineeredgear.com and make sure to treat yourself with some awesome gear and accessories tailored specifically to your professional and personal life as a civil engineer. Go check it out. You won't be disappointed. All right, so as we begin this topic, it probably is helpful to understand just a quick and a brief overview of what the PE exam is. Obviously, this exam, it gets updated often from the NCEES. They just released that they're going to update new specifications in April of 2024, so we want to be mindful of that. But we have a lot of previous data of the exam and how it's been going for students in the past. Uh, the exam is obviously, it's still 80 questions in length. You'll have eight hours to get through all those 80 questions. Um, they give you nine hours uh, as a time block because they got some a break in there and you got to fill out some yes, no forms and sign your life away. But once you get through all that, uh, you still have eight hours to get through 80 questions and the exam is difficult, right? Many people go through this exam and you're preparing for the exam. You have to treat it like a part-time job. Many people put in close to 300 hours worth of study time for this thing which is probably two hours during each weekday and, and more on the weekends. And so the question comes up often, which exam is the easiest? And the truth is there's no shortcuts to getting through this exam, right? There's just no way to get through that piece. But if you want to look at just which exam may be the easiest for you, what we need to do is probably dive into not only the specifications, but let's look at how many codes are required. And let's also like look into previous pass rates for what's been happening. So what I want to do is if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll go ahead and flip the script here and dive into some pass rates produced from the NCEES. So this was updated as of July of 2023, and I'm recording this in December, but these are still valid. Now, obviously, I think this will still carry forward into the future, even though specifications are going to be changing in April of 2024. So just be mindful of that. But I, I, deal, I still think um, the statistics will be similar to uh, those. So let's dive into this real quick. So for those listening, I'll try to describe this. Those that are watching, you can see my screen. So the NCES produces pass rates on this stuff all the time. They've converted, obviously, all the 
PE exams are being converted to CBT. Civil exam is CBT. It was accelerated because of COVID. And uh, they can correct them real quick. So let's just dive into what we need to know, which is the civil exams. There obviously, there's a ton of PEs out there now. It seems like any and every discipline that's going to be out there is going to have a PE exam associated with it. But for the main bread and butter, it's civil that gets this stuff. All right, let's go through it real quick. So if we're going to look at first-time takers and pass rates, civil construction only had 820 people take the exam. And the first time for the first time takers, they, they passed at a rate of 53%. So not great, right? Uh, for geotech people, it's even less. You've got 412 people that took geotech for the first time, and they had a 52% first time pass rate. For civil structural, they had 1382 people take it, 59% pa first time pass rate. For civil transportation, which is the, the winner here with population taking this exam, there was 1,913 people take that, and it had a 67% pass rate. And then you got a close second, 1,846 people took the water resources and environmental exam with a pass rate of 67%. And if you're going to just dive into those two, those two have the highest volume. Those two have the highest first-time pass rates. And for this particular year, this particular data set, if you look at repeat takers, there was 455 test takers of the transportation exam, and 49% of those people passed as a repeat taker, which is great. And if you look at water resources, you had 339 people as repeat takers, with 47% of those uh, passing the exam. And this was updated again, like I said, as of July of 2023. So if we're going to look at strictly what's the easy ex exam based on pass rates, you're probably going to default to one of those two. All right. So like I said, those are the pass rates. Those kind of help to paint a picture as to what may be easiest, what may be hardest out there. Out there. This, uh, this, uh, the day this date was, I guess this data was presented. You've got a tie between transportation and water resources. And then it looks like geotech is the hardest with um, the amount of people passing that followed by construction. Structural is also difficult as well. So what I want to do next though is if you're considering which exam is easiest, maybe we need to dive in into this a little bit deeper by looking at the specifications between these two because that will also help paint this story that we're trying to paint here of which exam may be the easiest for you. So if I go back to the NCEOS website and we just go check out, let's go check out transportation. So if we go dive into transportation, now currently the specifications are that the first eight sections are still the AM content, which is the same among all disciplines. They're getting rid of that in the next iteration of the exam next April in 2024. So that will go away and it will just be topics related to your particular discipline. But if you start in section nine of the specifications of the transportation, you can see you dive into traffic engineering, horizontal design, vertical design, intersection geometry, roadside and cross-section design, signal design, traffic control design, geotech and pavement, drainage, and alternative analysis. But probably one of the real killers with the transportation exam, and also it's also, I, I say it's a killer, but it's also a bright spot too. But they have a lot of standards, right? You've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six. They're all AASHTO standards. Seven, FHWA. Eight, HCM. And nine, the MUTCD. So with those standards, you're wondering, why are they having such a high pass rate? There's still a lot of standards they got to deal with. There's still a lot of material that they have to know. And I think the reason behind that is because a lot of the questions that are developed, I think, for transportation are basically trying to find that in the standard and answering the question as it's written in the standard. So it's pretty, well, I'm not going to say easy, but you basically follow the recipe book, right? You go find the standard, go find the information, answer the question. And so that that's also a positive about that exam, I think, is that the standards, even though there is quite a few of them, I think that the answers that, that are developed are questions you can quickly answer by finding them in those standards. So I wouldn't be scared of that if that's on your mind, but it, it does show, that, like I said, as part of the story, that it does have a very high pass rate. 
And so that's transportation. Let's go down into civil water resources. Again, the first eight section as of today are still the same. That again was is going to change in April of 24. But if you dive into the depth stuff only, starting in section nine, it's analysis and design. So you're going to deal with that. And then you've got hydraulics, closed conduit, hydraulics, open channel, hydrology, groundwater and wells, wastewater collection and treatment, which usually is the section that most water resource folks don't love, but um, that's in there. And section 15 is water quality. Uh, section 16 is drinking water distribution and treatment, followed by section 17, which is engineering economic analysis. So those are the sections. Now, the kicker here is if you go look at the standards and you're debating, okay, which one of these maybe easiest. Well, if you're looking at standards only and what kind of material you're going to need to know there, the water resources only requires two standards. And in the past, they required nothing, but they've updated this now. It requires two standards, a TSS 2014, which is recommended standards for wastewater facilities, and water 2018, which is recommended standards for water works. And that is it. So, you know, if you're trying to paint again the story of which exam may be the easiest, Water Resources has two standards that you need to know and understand, and it has the same pass rate. And in the past, historically speaking, it has been a little bit higher in the past too. But in the latest pass results, it's the same as transportation. And for repeat takers, transportation is even higher. But my opinion is that if you're trying to debate which exam may be easiest, I'm looking towards Water Resources because of the combination of pass rates and also the combination of standards that you need to know, which is more material that could be outside of simply just solving problems. So hopefully that helps a little bit. All right, so now that we've kind of established a story around what I think is probably the easiest PE exam for people to take, um, maybe we want to talk about which ones are the most difficult, and we did kind of hit that already. But if you're just looking at pass rates alone, and I'm not going to dive into this very much, but you can see that based on pass rates alone, alone geotechnical is probably the most difficult followed by construction followed by structural so geotech takes the winner here as the most difficult exam it also has the least amount of people taking that exam we need more geotechs out there what the heck's going on out there so um i took my exam in geotech by the way so uh geotech has the least amount of people 412 52 percent passing that if you go look at the specifications real quick if we're going to judge judge it based on standards um geotech used to have zero standards they upped it to one or two and now if you go look at the specs there are in fact one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen six standards that are now referenced in the specifications for standards that you should know and understand. That is a huge amount of standards. Just in comparison, if we go look at structural, which is usually rated as a higher exam, harder exam, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten standards there. And to round this off, let's go look at construction, um, which also has a pretty good volume of standards. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, with a couple under the CFRs, but basically eight different standards there that you're going to have to know and understand um, for construction. So. Geotech looks like it has the most standards that you do have to know and understand in addition to, I think, just the overall concepts that they ask people don't typically gravitate to or, or love, which is why I think it usually has the least amount of people taking the exam and probably the least uh, pass rate because it is a challenging exam. So I'm curious what your thoughts are. What do you think is the easiest exam? What do you think is the hardest exam? Um, these are definitely my thoughts and my opinions. And like I said, I'm going to caution all of this around understanding that uh, no exam for the PE is uh, easy. All of them take quite a bit of time to study for and are a challenge. And as we head into 2024, um, it's a little bit unknown uh, territory as the specifications will be changing. There's some positives to that because all you're going to have to know is topics related to your discipline, which is kind of nice. The negative to that is that we lose all the history and exam experience that we've, we know and understand from uh, everything we've had up to this point. And you also lose what a well-rounded engineer is in the first place. And I do think there are disciplines out there that it would make sense 
for people to be more well-rounded because you do need to understand other disciplines to do your job. So it is what it is. I'm going to read just a couple things. Um, we have a private Facebook community that is part of our civil PE review program at civilpereviewcourse.com. I always love to tap into there and just see what people are saying because when they pass, they like to talk about um, some tips and advice for people. So for those that are going to take water resources, if that's an easy example for you, there was a re recent test taker, Colin, that uh, said that he had passed recently some folks had asked uh, for tips and advice related to the water resources exam. And this is what he said. He said, I would just keep doing practice problems again and again, learn how to search the handbook. I, I found that just really clearing what to search was super helpful, learning where your basic conversions are. I didn't realize until the test that there was a uh, mg milligrams over liter to pound gallon conversion in the handbook. So don't miss those conversions in the handbook. Those are really, really helpful. I felt that just pounding out practice problems was truly the most helpful. So if you're looking for practice problems, definitely check out civilengineeringacademy.com. If you want to join our course, it comes with all the exams, including a CBT exam simulator, which we also sell individually. If you're into that, that will give you more practice as well. But that, that's really the key here for everyone taking these exams is to get a ton of practice problems under your belt, get exposure to a lot of different types of problems that are out there, and make sure you uh, set up a study schedule for your own success. So um, let's see if I can dive into one or two more of these comments just to give you some more tips. All right, another comment coming from Ari, who recently passed the water resources exam as well. Any tips? And he says here, I focused on the breadth part of the exam. I would say know the fundamental concepts and get familiar with the reference handbook. The question and follow-up question to that is, did you find the depth portion to be quite a challenge? And went on to say that I uh, didn't do treatment work, so that was the most challenging for him. But as long as you understand what they're asking, I think you can be successful with the problem. So, And in addition to that, mentioned that going to into the exam with confidence is very important. You can prepare and panic but remaining calm and working through the ones you know for sure will help keep you in a positive mind space. So I wanted to highlight some of those comments. Again, that's coming from our private Facebook community, which is part of our course. You can check that out at civilpereviewcourse.com. Um, but um, that's uh, that's my opinion uh, for those listening. If you're concerned about which exam is the easiest, it's pretty much a tie between transportation and water resources. But I'm going to lean towards water resources as the winner in that case. And geotech looks like it takes the hardest to pass the P exam. Now, I'm going to add this to this conversation. But the truth of the matter is, is you want to take an exam if you're debating which exam to take and you're just wondering what's easiest. You want to take an exam that's really going to apply to your workplace, right? Do what's going to make sense for you to help accelerate your career and give you a leg forward in the knowledge that you need to know and understand in the field that you're in. Um, that would be my advice. So don't just go off of what's easiest. Don't go off of what's hardest change your mind. If you're doing geotech work, take the geotech exam. If you're doing structural work, take the structural exam. If you're doing construction or maybe you're involved in construction in any way and you want to improve that area, take construction. Don't let these pass rates scare you away from taking any one of these, especially as a repeat taker. I'm a repeat taker. You can get really disappointed in looking at pass rates and be discouraged by all of that. Don't be discouraged by any of that. Just keep going. If you fell, just get back on the bus when You've gotten some time to vent and let it all out and get back on the bus and get after it again. So that's my advice for you. Uh, just a couple little housekeeping items as we look to the future. Of those wondering about our course, we are in the works of updating it to make sure we meet the new specifications. We're actively doing that. We're excited to be working on that. We hope to have that completely done by the time the new specifications hit us in April of 2024. So looking forward to that. We're updating our exams. We're updating our lecture modules. We'll make Make sure that we get you covered and we're excited for that. If you're looking for other course material that's out there that we produce that's going to help you on your journey to become a professional engineer, we just released a certified floodplain manager review course. If you've wanted to get those initials CFM after your initial, definitely check that out at cfmreviewcourse.com. Uh, Matt, who is uh, a contributor here at Civil Engineering Academy and a CFM and a PE, uh, helped create that program. So if you've ever wondered what the heck that is, or if you're a water
a resources engineer, I think it's an important credential that you want after your name, um, and you can help with uh, floodplain management.